Due to the damage they caused, more importantly, the loss of life, for centuries people have been looking into a way to predict earthquakes. Ideally, they've been looking for something which gives them enough of a lead time to be able to issue a warning that will save the lives of most of the people in the area. As I discussed in another video, there are four types of waves created by an earthquake. Raleigh waves, love waves, secondary waves or S waves, and primary waves or P waves. Recently, there's been a lot of focus looking at the P waves, as these are the fastest moving of the waves that have been detected before the ground significantly starts to move. It's possible that these P waves are the ones that some animals can actually detect and then seem to be able to anticipate an earthquake. Major earthquakes, especially those with a deeper source, it's currently possible to be able to detect P waves about one minute before the earthquake fully hits. This isn't much of a warning, but in the major earthquake zones, it's enough to invest in all the needed sensors and technical backup to relay the information to the public and save some lives. Now, scientists and politicians and others are not actually satisfied with this, as the costs involved in running and setting up the system are considerable, and the warning time is still limited. Even with a P-wave detection system in place, if the earthquakes say were to strike at night, one minute warning would be of minimal use. This means the search is on the way to get a longer warning, and they may actually have found a potential method of getting that longer warning. Earthquake is created by two large slabs of land moving relative to each other. It's this sudden movement which creates the damage and subsequent loss of life. Using GPS measurements, it's been found that the area around the site of an earthquake will start to move or slip about two hours before a major earthquake occurs. This slip is only a few millimetres, but it can be measured. Does this mean that we are now able to predict the location of all future earthquakes? Well, no, at least not quite yet, and certainly not for all earthquakes. Firstly, the GPS landslip measurement seems to be good at predicting earthquakes of a magnitude of 7 or more, which is the most damaging earthquakes, but it may not be useful in smaller earthquakes. Next, the GPS measurement needed far more sensitive to be able to predict the earthquakes ahead of time. Currently the recording and compiling of measurements mean that we have to look back and notice the movement only after an earthquake occurs and checking all the recorded measurements. Part of the issue involves the magnitude of these large quakes. These large quakes don't generally happen in isolation as the earthquakes tend to be in the earthquake prone areas. So poor shocks or small earthquakes which occur just before a major earthquake, relatively common in the area. These four shocks are just smaller quakes and are only different from a major quake by the magnitude of the quake. Like aftershocks, they can only be identified as being four shocks or aftershocks after the event. Means there's no way to tell if you get a small earthquake whether that in an earthquake prone area with that small quake is actually going to be a full shock or just a lone smaller earthquake. Only after a major quake you can then look back at the ripples and identify the smaller quakes as full shocks or aftershocks in relation to that major earthquake. So unfortunately, a full shock isn't able to be used to predict a major earthquake. These smaller earthquakes though can also cloud the issue over using GPS measurements to predict a major earthquake. As currently the GPS systems aren't yet sensitive enough to give a clear real-time identification of a future major earthquake. Development and installation of more sensitive GPS systems which can be monitored by satellite could potentially pick out pattern of ground movement which will enable us in the future to identify a major quake with enough of a lead time to minimise the casualties. These slips are also at just a few millimetres in height. The measuring equipment needs to be isolated from any background noise events which could record small movements in the ground. Potentially these elements could be anything from a large truck moving by, an explosion from a quarry. Again, one of the reasons why the measurements will be really relayed by satellite is to pick out a general pattern of movement, not just one single measurement. 